going on guys it's greg here aka new york prepper this is part one of a multi-part series on the review of a ruger m77 hawkeye alaskan bolt action rifle this rifle is chambered in 300 win mag okay and um in this video i'm just going to do an overview of the rifle itself and the different parts of the rifle and and just give you guys a quick uh, look at the rifle itself and kind of discuss some things that I'm going to be doing with it and, and plans that I have to customize it and things like that. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a quick tabletop overview here and then um, I'm going to do subsequent videos in the coming weeks when I take this out to the range. I'm going to film it when I uh, actually shoot it. So, um, the first thing you see on the bottom is a scope. I got to mount that scope and bore sight it. And uh, that's going to be done sometime in the coming days. And then I'm going to take it out to the range in the coming weeks. So um, that'll be the next part in the review, okay, of me shooting this with iron sights and with the scope as well. And um, so expect a very detailed and thorough review of this rifle okay it's chambered in 300 win mag as you can see the uh case over here okay this is a 300 win mag all right um in case you guys are unaware of what a 300 win mag is it is a uh 308 caliber uh bullet and the case is um is made from a 375 h and h okay so the parent the parent case of this cartridge is a 375 H and H which is a safari caliber uh, safari cartridge okay it's made for the big five in uh, Africa and, and people in Alaska use the 375 H and H but basically the the 300 win mag was based off of uh, the 375 H and H it was uh, short the, the case was shortened just a little bit and blown out and, um, you know, it is a belted magnum. You can see the reason why it's called a belted magnum is that it has a belt on the bottom here. All right. Just like its parent, the uh, 375 H&H. Okay. Um, what you're looking at here is a Underwood ammo, uh, 180 grain, um, AccuBond. All right. With, uh, this one's traveling at 3150 feet per second and generating around 4,000 foot pounds of muzzle energy. All right. So, this is the this is the cartridge that that is that this rifle is chambered for. You know, I'm just going to show you guys a comparison of the 300 Win Mag next to a 44 Magnum. If you guys are curious uh the difference in size and how how big a 300 Win Mag is, um it's a really large cartridge. Um so on the right here, you have a 44 Mag, okay? And on the left is the 300 Win Mag. So you can see how massive, you know, the, the case, the case is, you know, huge uh, on the 300 Win Mag. Makes a 44 Magnum look really small, all right? Just wanted to show you guys that. This is an Underwood 220 grain penetrator on the 44 Mag. And look at how, look at how small that looks, all right? So I wanted to just show you guys that. Uh, now this model, the Ruger Alaskan. Um, the Ruger Alaskan was, was made for, uh, other cartridges, all right? It was made for, originally when it was first released in 2010, it was made for the 375 Ruger and the 416 Ruger for Dangerous Game. But what happened was they discontinued it sometime after like 2013, they discontinued it and, and then two years ago around 2017 i believe they reintroduced the uh rifle in other calibers or other cartridges um they they now have it in 375 ruger 300 win mag and 338 win mag okay they don't have it in 416 ruger anymore all right if you guys aren't aware of what the 416 ruger and 375 ruger are um they are a proprietary cartridge that was created by by hornady and ruger together for this particular rifle 
Um, Hornady wanted a dangerous game cartridge that could be shot out of a standard length action or a 306 length action with a 3.34 inch cartridge overall length, all right, which is the same length as a 306. Uh, or this this 300 Win Mag here is a standard length. This is what you call standard length uh, or long action. All right, anything bigger than this, like a 375 H and H, uh, 338 Lapua, um, a 416 Rigby, 458 Lot. All right, those longer cartridges they need to have a longer magazine box. All right, they have a overall length of up to 3.8 inches. Okay, so they need to have a, a four inch long magazine box and a much longer receiver to be able to feed those long cartridges all right so ruger wanted to create dangerous game cartridges um you know that would fit into a 306 length action this way they don't have to modify their their existing uh m77 hawkeyes which are chambered in either long action or short action the short actions being 308s the winchester short mags and things like that um, and then the long actions for 3006 300 win mag 270s okay anything with a, a coal a coal of 3.34 inches all right so Ruger didn't want to have to create a magnum length receiver to be able to fit you know uh, 416 Rigby's and 458 lots so they came together with Hornady and they said well what can you guys do to maybe design some type of a cartridge that would duplicate the performance of a 416 Rigby or 375 H and H, you know, which are the classic Safari and dangerous game cartridges, but be able to shoot them out of a 306 length action. So this way we can chamber all of our rifles in them. And and that's what they did. They created the 375 Ruger and the 416 Ruger, uh, which uh are basically they they made them out of a belted magnum case like this one all right but what they did was they eliminated the belt and they blew out the case a little bit more so the cases on the 375 ruger and 416 ruger are, are fat they're much fatter that's how they're able to carry a lot more powder in them and they're able to reach the required velocity and foot pounds of energy uh to be able to duplicate a 416 rigby or 375 h and h in them but that was the original concept of this rifle that you're looking at that was the original concept and the original model it only it was only chambered in 375 ruger and 416 ruger they didn't have any other offerings and then they discontinued it altogether. and then for a couple of years you couldn't find them and then they re uh engineered them and they changed some things around including the chamberings all right so the model that you see in front of me uh you know this is this is the newer version of the alaskan all right and the way you can tell is that the newer versions they have this uh muzzle brake here okay the original alaskans they had no muzzle brake at all all right it was just the the barrel would just end over here it wasn't threaded at all so they added the muzzle brake on there okay that was one of the big changes that they made uh which is nice you know especially if you're shooting like a 300 win mag um or a 375 ruger you know you're looking at a, a cartridge that generates a lot of recoil you know and it, without a muzzle brake um if you're shooting at it with a scope and you're trying to be very precise at longer ranges having that muzzle brake is a huge help in terms of you know being able to to have a steady hold and um you know not flinching and things like that all right and and repeated shooting um so it's a huge you know boost to the to the rifle in my opinion it increased its uh, marketability and, and definitely was a big improvement over the original uh, Alaskan that didn't have the break at all um, all right so um, another thing with the original Alaskan is that the, the stocks that they used uh, the stocks that they used had a aluminum bedding block inside of them all right now the the Alaskans that they sell now all right the one that I have actually came with this stock right here Okay, this stock does not have any aluminum bedding block in it. This is a Hogue. All right, so Hogue makes the uh, the stocks for the Alaskan rifles. And it has this tacky, uh, if you guys are familiar with Hogue, they make the uh, pistol grips for the Smith & Wesson 500. All right, and um, this, this stock, you know, this is the original stock that came with this rifle. 
It doesn't come with an aluminum bedding block. As you can see, it has the pillar bedding in there. All right, but no uh, aluminum bedding block. And I'll take the stock off of this. This is an aftermarket stock that I put on. All right, it doesn't come with that. All right, so this is actually the original stock. And I think that this was a, a, a worse choice, in my opinion. Um, so basically, the original Alaskan came with this uh it came with the same stock but it had the uh, aluminum bedding block in it all right and the aluminum bedding block in my opinion is is huge especially on uh heavy recoiling calibers you know like 300 wind mag 375 ruger any of the safari or big bore calibers you know um you want to have that aluminum bedding block it makes the stock a lot more solid and um it doesn't flex as much in the forend area, okay, especially if you're going to be shooting off of a rest. Like, you know, this rifle here is a 300 Win Mag, and I plan to, you know, shoot off of a bipod or a, a rest of some sort. Um, you know, and I, I don't want my stock to flex and touch the barrel because that could affect the accuracy. And that's where having a aluminum bedding block is, is very helpful, um, in, in a, especially in something like a 300 Win Mag where you plan to shoot, you know, beyond two, three hundred yards with it, you know. Um, so I don't know why they eliminated the bet the stocks that have the bedding block. Uh, I think that was a poor choice in my opinion. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm a little bit upset that Ruger would do that. Uh, otherwise, the rifle is really good. I, I just feel like this was a cost-cutting measure. They wanted to cut costs and save money because these uh, stocks here, the one that I'm holding, the one that doesn't, the one that came with it originally, it doesn't have the aluminum block. It's probably about a hundred dollars cheaper um, than the stocks that have the uh, aluminum block in it. So for every rifle they sell, they're saving about a hundred to hundred fifty dollars. All right, it's not much, but it adds up if you sell fifty thousand, you know, rifles. Um, you know, or, or hundred thousand rifles, you know, but, um, so this is the original stock and, uh, you know, I, I got rid of it. You know, I'm not going to, I don't plan on using this because it flexes too much by the fore end. Okay. Um, so if, if you guys are going to buy this Alaskan, I recommend that you get an af aftermarket, uh, Hogue stock with the aluminum block like I did. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to take apart the, uh, the the stock and I'll show you what the difference is. But if you're going to get this rifle, whether it's in 300 Win Mag or 338 Win Mag or 375 Ruger, I highly recommend that you go to Hogue and you spend about $250 and get yourself a uh, aluminum bedding block uh, stock like you see here. Okay, you can go directly to Hogue, go, go to their website and you can directly... Uh, order one of the uh, the stocks that have the bedding block in them. Okay, so um, so I'm gonna get to the rifle itself. I'm sorry that you know I'm I'm getting off on a tangent here, but um, you know I just wanted to cover those those topics before I got deeper into the into the rifle itself. All right. Um, so as you see here, this is an olive drab uh, stock. Okay, and this is the aftermarket stock that I told you guys about. Okay, um, I, you know, I like the aluminum bedding block because what happens is here in the fore end, the fore end section here, what happens is if you don't have an aluminum bedding block, this, this uh, fore end will flex quite a bit, especially if you rest it on something. And when it flexes like that, it's going to make contact with the barrel here, all right? And you don't want contact with your barrel while you're shooting because it's going to um, affect the accuracy, okay? Um, so as you see, this, this stock is floated. I actually had to sand the, this took me about eight hours of sanding to, to float this barrel on this stock. Okay. Uh, because what happened is Hogue discontinued the, this particular barrel profile for the 300 Win Mag. They call it the B barrel. So there's three, uh, contours that, um, there's three contours that Ruger uses on their rifles. They use what they call the A barrel, which is a, a typical sporter sporter contour with, you know, similar to like a number three sporter with maybe a 0.6 inch uh, muzzle diameter. Then they have a B barrel, which is this one you see here. Um, you know, that's going to be a little bit more closer to like a number four sporter contour. 
and then you have the heavy varmint or or heavy barrel which is like a number five sporter um or a light varmint contour all right and what happened was hogue discontinued the B barrel stocks in this uh, bedding block version. Okay, so they only Hoag only carries stocks for the A barrels and the heavy barrels, but they don't have them for the B barrels anymore. All right, so I couldn't use a heavy barrel because the heavy barrel it's too big, and the, and the, uh, you know obviously the B barrel doesn't exist anymore. The B barrel stock, so I had to buy an A barrel uh, stock and I had to sand it down by hand in order to fit the barrel and to float it. So it took me about, you know, a good eight to 10 hours of hand sanding uh, to get this down. I sanded this all by hand in order to get that nice float. As you see, it's about a 16th of an inch on either side. And that's, that's the way you want a, a truly floated barrel. It's not just a dollar bill is not enough, okay? The dollar bill thing is, is not enough because uh, a dollar bill is just not enough of a gap, all right? All it takes is a little bit of pressure and that gap is going to close if, you, if you're if you only having it, you know, enough to slide a dollar bill through. You need to have at least a sixteenth of an inch, all right, on either side of the barrel, all around the barrel, okay, because the stocks will flex. And that's, you know, if you rest this stock on a, you know, on a, on a object, okay, some kind of a, you know, let's say your backpack or on your knee, or on a shooting rest like you see here, a sandbag, the stock is going to flex a little bit. And if your gap is too small, um, it's going to make contact with the barrel and that's going to affect your accuracy. Your shots are going to be thrown off quite a bit. So I free floated the stock myself and that's why I've been so busy and I haven't been able to uh, make a lot of uh, live streams. But you can see here the, the floating, uh, if you look underneath over here, you can see the gap is, is quite large, all right, and that was all done by hand. I used three varieties of sandpaper to get it to that, to get it to that uh, nice, nice um, level here. I used a uh, coarse uh, 80 grit, 120 grit, and 220 grit sandpaper to get it, and then I had to smooth it out when I was done to, so there's no rough spots and stuff like that, so I'm really proud of the work I did on this. Um, but so let me just uh, go over the rifle real quick. So this is the Olive Drab Hogs aftermarket stock. All right, uh, it's about two hundred and thirty dollars, and it's definitely worth it. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll do an overview from the outside. So it has a twenty-inch barrel. Um, it's a Mauser style uh, bolt. Okay, it has a three-position safety here, so it has safe. Uh, open the bolt and then fire okay so it's it's three positions so the all the way back the safety is all the way back you can't move the bolt the bolt is locked the trigger is the trigger is locked the trigger won't move okay if you put it um, in the middle you can cycle the bolt but you you, can, you can't pull the trigger okay and then if I put it forward I can cycle the bolt and then I can pull the trigger which I'm not going to do now because I don't have any uh, Actually, I can I can put a uh, a round in here for you guys. All right, so I'll put it all the way forward and pull the trigger. Okay, the trigger is actually pretty decent. Um, it's their LC6 trigger. Now I do have a Timney Timney trigger that I plan to install on this rifle. All right, which I'm gonna do when I'm after I mount my scope. I'm gonna install the Timney trigger on there. Um, the Timney trigger lightens up the poundage down to about two to three pounds. Uh, right now, the LC6 trigger is about five pounds. Okay, so it's not bad. Um, it's not what I would call a trigger for precision work. Okay, if you want a precision rifle that you're going to shoot with beyond 300 yards, like I plan to do with this, um, you want to have at least a three pound trigger. You know, uh, you don't want to have a five pound trigger. Five pound triggers are good if this rifle, if I was just using iron sights and maybe a low power scope and my shots were going to be under 200 yards, then the five pound trigger is fine, okay? But um, if I want to make longer distance shots, I definitely want to have that lighter, lighter trigger on there, okay? So I'm going to install the Timney trigger on this and I'll do a video on that as well if you guys want to check that out. 
Um, again, if this wasn't chambered in a 300 Win Mag, I probably would not install the Timney trigger. I would just leave the Ruger trigger on there. But because this is a 300 Win Mag, okay, and uh, 300 Win Mags are, you know, a long range caliber. That's what they were made for, okay. A 300 Win Mag really starts to shine, you know, after 500 yards, okay. Up to 500 yards, it, it doesn't really show its its uh, its beauty. Okay, after 500 yards is when this this baby right here shows its beauty. Okay, this 300 Win Mag will will carry as much energy as a 44 Magnum at a thousand yards. Okay, so at a thousand yards, this this 300 Win Mag uh, will will produce uh, the same amount of energy at a thousand yards as a 44 Magnum does at 10 yards. Okay, so has a lot of energy it starts out with 4,000 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle and it retains a lot of energy throughout the trajectory that's why the 300 Win Mag is so popular with big game hunters and military snipers all right because um, especially before the 338 Lapua was invented the 300 Win Mag was used heavily uh, because of its ability to retain energy over a long uh, trajectory okay um, so you know, this is an incredible uh, cartridge, in my opinion. The 300 Win Mag is, is my favorite cartridge uh, for, for long-distance shooting. I think it's uh, it has a lot of advantages that a lot of guys overlook. Everybody's jumping onto 338 Lapua's now and uh, 50 caliber, you know, 50 BMG. But the 300 Win Mag is a very good option, especially for the common man and the, the, the armed citizen, armed prepared citizen, all right, because I can buy a box of 300 Win Mag for 50 bucks, right, versus 338 Lapua, I'm going to be, I'm going to be spending, you know, $100 a box, all right, and even reloading a 338 Lapua, you're still looking at three or four dollars per, per cartridge, okay, so it's much more affordable, and it uses a 308 diameter uh, bullet, all right, so that gives you a lot more options as far as, you know, bullet choices if you want to hand load. So in my opinion, I really like the 300 Win Mag. And, uh, you know, I can go as high as, you know, full power. And with the full power 300 Win Mag, I can, you know, easily reach a 1,000 yards and drop a bear with, you know, heavy bullets. You know, I can go up to 240 grain bullets in a 300 Win Mag. Or I can go as light as 150 grain bullets, all right? And I can go, I can download this, you know, to 3006 levels if I want to, or even 308 levels. Or I can load it all the way up and have it become a bear stopper and a thousand yard rifle, all right? So 300 Win Mag, in my opinion, is, is the best North American cartridge for any situation. With the exception of, I would say... Uh, brown bear defense, you know, in close quarters. Now, this could still stop a brown bear, especially if I had like heavier bullets, let's say like 200 grain or 220 grain. It would still be a decent bear stopper, but I would want something heavier like a, a 375 or 416 or 4570. Um, but I still wouldn't feel undergunned if I was in a bear country area, all right, for brown bear. This would still do the job. Um, you know, but there's just better options for bear. But in general, I think 300 Win Mag is, in my opinion, the only cartridge you, you would ever need in North America um, because it gives you that versatility. You know, you can you can load this up to, like I said, full power levels where you're going to get over foot 4,000 foot-pounds of energy, guys. If you don't know what that means, uh, a 12-gauge shotgun, all right, with, you know, one-ounce slugs generates around 3,400 foot-pounds of energy. Uh, maybe less, maybe 3,300 foot-pounds of energy. This 300 Win Mag will generate over 4,000, maybe 4,200 foot-pounds of energy, which is, you know, basically 20% more energy than a 12-gauge shotgun with slugs, all right? So it's got a lot of power, um, and it's a very powerful cartridge. And, and because of that power, it can transfer its energy over long distances and, you know, very... If you use very sleek bullet designs with high ballistic coefficients, you can, you know, you can easily reach over a thousand yards and still have enough energy to drop an elk if you wanted to uh, at that distance. You know, that's not something that I would do, but you could, no problem. 
Um, now, a lot of the 300 Win Mag bullets now, for, you know, you can uh, get Sierra Match Kings and Burgers with the uh, 230 grain or 240 grain offerings, and they have a ballistic coefficient of 0 0.717, all right, which is insane, all right, for any kind of 308 diameter uh, ca uh, caliber bullet to have a ballistic coefficient of over 0.7 is absolutely insane. That's basically approaching a 338 Lapua level. All right, a 338 Lapua with a 250 or, or 300 grain bullet is going to be around 0.7 to 0.78. All right, so the 300 Win Mag is basically approaching um, the same ballistic levels as a 338 Lapua is, all right, especially with the 220 grain offerings and the 240 grain, 230 grain, you know, um, those are, you know, you can push those up to 2,800 feet per second, you know, if, as long as your magazine box is long enough to, to uh, push the bullets out, all right, but in this situation, I'm not going to be using this for 1,000 yard shooting, I think the longest I'll go with this rifle is seven, 800 yards, um, just because I'm limited by the factory uh, magazine length here, which is only going to allow me to go up to around 3.4 inches. So I'm not going to be able to take advantage of a lot of the longer bullet designs and the more sleek bullet designs like the uh, the Burgers and the Sierra Match Kings. Um, I'm not going to be able to, the bullet is basically going to be too long for the, uh, for the magazine box. All right, so I'm going to have to stick to probably 180 grain, 200 grain uh, bullets, okay, which is fine uh, for my purposes with this rifle. You know, this is not going to be my, my ultimate long-range rifle. This is more of a general purpose um, deer hunting rifle, um, SHTF rifle, okay. This is a general purpose bolt-action rifle for anything for close to medium distances, all right. My Long range rifle is going to be dedicated just to long range and it's in the shop right now. Um, I did a video on it. I did part one of the SHTF sniper rifle build. Um, and it, you can check out my playlist. It's in there. All right. And, and it's in the shop right now. It's at GA Precision and they're building it. And because of the virus, it's not going to be ready until summertime. So, but that has a CZ 550. Uh, receiver which allows me to take advantage of the full you know uh, bullet offerings for the 300 win mag you know I can go up to the Sierra match Kings the 240 grain Sierras or the 230 grain burgers and I can push those up to 2850 feet per second no problem and uh, you know with this I wouldn't be able to do that because the box is too short you know the CZ 550 box is almost four inches long so that gives me about almost three quarters of an inch extra length uh, to play with, you know. So if I want to use those extra long bullets, I have plenty of room. Um, but I'm not a big fan of factory rifles in general, uh, especially for precision rifles. I think it's hard to find a good, you know, precision rifle and a good factory rifle in general. Um, but I think this rifle is well made. It has a 1 to 10 rate of twist, which is very, you know, common for the 300 Win Mag. You know, with the 1 to 10 twist, you can easily go up to a 220 grain bullet and stabilize it, no problem. Um, so they, they, they did a good twist rate on this. Um, so let me just show you some of the features uh, before I get too carried away. It comes with these express sights here, all right? If you guys don't know what an express sight is, it's for Safari uh safari hunting okay it, it has this uh it's like a v v notch rear and it has this white post on the front and what you do is they call it an express sight because it's supposed to be very fast all right and it is all right it's a very fast alignment of your sights i'm going to see if i can't align it for you guys on the camera here um so you have this white line in the middle of the rear sight and you line that up with the post on the front okay and that's your sight picture right there, okay? Let me see if you guys can't uh, see that. You see, the that's what the sight picture looks like, okay? Uh, you drop that white post in the front. You drop it in the middle of the V-notch in the rear. So it's super quick. Uh, you know, it, this is originally was designed as a dangerous game rifle, okay? So uh, with a dangerous game rifle, you want to have 
something that you can quickly uh, you know align the sights with and you want good solid iron sights that you know will uh, you get a quick sight picture all right because if you have a bear charging at you from 25 yards or 50 yards you know you want to be able to throw your rifle up align the sights quickly and send some bullets down at the down at the uh, the threat okay and this uh, this rifle was originally designed as a dangerous game rifle it, you know because it was originally offered in the 375 Ruger and 416 Ruger like I mentioned those were dangerous game cartridges um, but what I like about this rifle is that it has the uh, 20 inch barrel on it so it's it's nice and compact okay um, especially for like a general purpose rifle if it's not going to be dedicated for long range I prefer a shorter barrel all right I don't want to have to lug around a 26 inch barrel in the woods or you know whatever I'm doing I don't want to have that long barrel um, I want something nice and compact okay and this rifle is, is very compact it has a 20 inch barrel uh, without the muzzle brake on it's probably gonna have the same length as a 12 gauge defensive shotgun it handles the same way as my 12 gauge my uh, Remington 870 with the 18 inch barrel it, it handles the same way as my home defense shotgun which I really like it's it's very, um, you know, compact, it's easy to handle, it's lightweight, you know, you can bring it up really quickly, um, you can bring the rifle up very fast, okay, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's awesome, I really love it, um, especially, you know, if, if, if I was using this just with iron sights in a dangerous game situation, this is the rifle that I want, um, very quick handling, very compact and maneuverable, very lightweight, uh, it comes in at around seven and a half pounds, I think, from the factory, maybe eight pounds. Um, you know, and, and another thing, too, with these, uh, with the Rugers that I really like is the controlled round feed. All right, so uh, what controlled round feed is, is um, the bolt has this claw extractor on the side, okay? And this claw here, this claw, you can see the claw, it goes around the bolt face, and it grabs the rim of the cartridge all right so let me demonstrate that for you okay so normal bolt actions like a um, so the the controlled round feed makes this rifle a hundred percent reliable I can cycle this upside down all right and I'll, I'll even show that to you right now all right I'll demonstrate to you right now um, and just so you guys know this has a three round box magazine with a hinged floor plate um, it's all steel. That's one thing that I really like about the Rugers is that they're all steel. There's no uh, aluminum here. There's no plastic. Um, a lot of the companies now they're starting to make uh, hinge their hinged floor plates and their their especially their trigger guards and the the bottom metal. They're starting to make them from aluminum. I think to save money. But Ruger is staying with 100% steel, which I think is important for a dangerous game uh, rifle. All right, so it has a three-round box magazine, and uh, you can top one off so and make the total four. Um, but here I have some dummy rounds, and I'll show you guys how I can cycle this upside down. All right, and I'll show you the reliability of the controlled round Mosser action. Okay, so let me see if I can't. Uh... All right, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to cycle this bolt upside down. Okay, let me see if I can't... Uh... Let me see if I can't show you guys here. Okay, so um, I'm going to cycle the bolt and feed the next round upside down. All right, look at this. Okay. All right, and I'm going to feed the next, the next cartridge. You see? See how it's controlling the cartridge? I can hold this in any angle. Any angle, and that cartridge is not going anywhere. There's no way, there's no way for it to jam. All right, it has control of the the rim of the cartridge at all times you see this claw here the claw grabs the rim of the cartridge and controls it throughout the whole feeding process so there's no way that this thing can jam i can hold this upside down all right it's not going anywhere okay i can cycle this upside down no problem okay all right so that's a huge advantage to the uh huge advantage to the um, 
controlled feed, all right, especially for dangerous game or self-defense scenarios. You know, you want to make sure you have reliable feeding, okay? Um, so that's one thing that I like about the, the Rugers and, and this particular uh, rifle in general. I love that controlled feed, okay? So it has the, the claw extractor. Um, I'll give you a second look at it, okay, so you guys can see. Um, so this, this rifle also has a barrel band on the front, and the reason they have that is to protect your hand from recoil. Um, so I'll give you guys just a close-up look, because I didn't get to do that yet. Um, so this barrel band here is, is to protect your hand, so when you're shooting, this swivel stud doesn't hit your hand, all right, especially from heavy recoiling calibers like 300 Win Mag or 375 Ruger, 416 Ruger, the recoil, you know, this, this uh, swivel stud here is going to hit your hand and, and bruise it. So they have a barrel band. Um, these are the, the sights here. They're windage adjustable. Okay. Um, all right. And uh, they have the integral, integral scope rings, okay, which I lapped recently. So they have these integral scope rings here with a recoil lug on them and they go right into the uh the this is the lug here and they clamp over it just like that okay it's a very solid uh scope mounting system all right if you don't want to buy a base this is a very solid option um you know so and i lap these i did a video of me lapping them all right, but I love this rifle, nice and compact, uh, and this stock that I, I bought was definitely a good choice. All right, I highly recommend you guys buy this, uh, a this aftermarket stock if you're going to get this rifle and spend the extra 200 You may have to sand it down to, uh, you know, to, to, to free float it like I did, and it may take you a while. Um, I don't have a Dremel, but if you had a Dremel, it might go quicker. All right, so let me just uh, give you an overview. It has this tacky grip here on the stock. I love this pistol grip as well. It's good for prone shooting and tactical shooting. Uh, I love the, the, the fact that the bottom of the stock is flat, which, you know, if you want to rest this on something, um, you know, you can rest it. Uh, it's perfect for, you know, if I want to use this in tactical situations, I can use this in tactical situations as well because it's got that flat bottom here on the stock um, and I can just you know rest it it's got these nice angled sides here so you can grip it just has a nice natural natural grip on it I love it um, and it's got that soft you know tacky tacky rubber you can see it has the grips on it the uh, these little you know Hogue is known for that that's their trademark uh, they have these little you know dots here as you can see okay um, and let me just let me just show you the, uh, let me just show you guys the, uh, all right, here's a better look. Um, I had to increase the brightness on my camera. There's the barrel band. There's the muzzle brake. Now you can take this muzzle brake off and they have a, they have a thread protector that you can screw on instead if you don't want to use the muzzle brake. Um, they also have a, a, a barrel weight. It's like a weight that you know, instead of, if you don't want to use this, if you're at the range and you don't want to deafen your, your friends, you know, you can put the weight on there, um, and it'll still reduce the recoil a little bit because of the weight, but it's not going to deafen people. Um, here is the bottom metal. All right. It says Ruger here. Okay. Um, beautiful, beautiful job they did. Um, solid steel, uh, trigger, uh, guard. Okay. Here's the, uh, you know, all steel here. There's no plastic. I know a lot of the Kimbers, you know, they use all, they use all steel on these. A lot of the Kimbers, they use plastic on theirs. I don't know why they do that, but, um, and it's got this, I like this concealed, uh, trigger plate release, you know, so this way you don't accidentally push the button down and release your, your cartridges in the woods. You know, it's concealed and you, you got to push it pretty hard to get the, uh, the trigger plate out, you know, so, or the trigger, um, not the trigger plate, I'm sorry, the uh, floor plate, you got to push this down pretty hard to get the floor plate to release, so it's, it's good, it's not too, it's, you know, a lot of the uh, companies, they make like a button here, so if you hit the button by accident, you know, you could open this up and dump all your cartridges out, 
Um, <clears throat> beautiful rifle, guys. I love this rifle. Uh, this is, like I said, my general purpose uh, hunting and SHTF gun. I like the fact that it has iron sights because, you know, if my scope fails, I can still use the iron sights. Uh, I, I still have those um, as a good, you know, backup option, okay? Um, and uh, here is the... Here's the uh, the bolt again, and I'll show you how it, it how the bolt face looks. Okay, and you see that claw that that rounds goes around the uh, bolt face, and it grabs the cartridge. You see that? So, oh yeah. I mean, I I guess if I shake it, it'll fall. But all right, it grabs the cartridge and it holds it the whole time. All right, and that's why it makes it very reliable. Okay. Um, that's why I, I highly recommend you guys get a any kind of action that has a Mauser style action like a Winchester Model 70, the Ruger Hawkeye, CZ 550. Okay, they're all very good options because they have that Mauser style claw, reliable feeding, especially for a dangerous game hunting rifle or for SHTF. Um, like in this, in SHTF, if I want to, for um, you know long range threats okay if i need some if i need some rifle f to handle long range engagements you know i have this rifle here it's very compact um but um so that's pretty much it i mean uh i'll just give you guys another overview here and i'll show you guys another little trick that a lot of people don't know uh so here it says ruger m77 hawkeye 300 win mag okay look at this very good quality uh solid i like this this sight base is really solid here it's adjustable for windage but not for elevation unfortunately okay uh look at how how you know thick this this base is here this thing is like bomb proof i mean it's huge you know i love this um you know, for dangerous game, you know, this is ultimate in reliability. This rear sight is, is solid. It's not going anywhere. Um, I mean, I could bang this off of a tree, and it's not going to mess it up or, or throw off the alignment or or break it off. It's very solid. Um, you know, so if you get this in a 375 Ruger and you plan to use it for dangerous game, um, that's a great option, Okay. Um, same thing with the front sight. The front sight is, you know, it doesn't have any wings on it, but you can see how over overbuilt it is. I mean, it's the front sight is just huge and very reliable, nice and compact. Uh, you know, the bolt is not a hollow bolt; it's a solid one-piece bolt. A um, lot of lot of companies now they make a uh, the bolt is hollow. I, I don't know why. I guess to cut on weight a little bit. It's got this nice big bolt here so you can grab it easily okay and um i just love this thing so i want to show you guys a little trick on how you can cart chamber four rounds in this thing because a lot of people a lot of people don't think that you know with controlled feed you can't put an extra round in the chamber but you can so i want to just show that to you guys so what you're going to do uh in order to do that you want to first put one round in the chamber and I'm going to use a dummy round for this, so you guys are, uh, you know, don't get scared. Um, now, you can drop, a lot of people think that you can't drop a cartridge in and chamber it. You can. The, the claw extractor will snap over the rim. You don't have to actually push it into the magazine box. You can drop it in and feed it just like a push feed uh, if you want to, and it'll snap. Okay? No problem. So I put one in the chamber just like that, and I put it on safe. Okay, make sure you're... So here's the safety, by the way. Um, so here's the three-position safety. This is safe. This is uh, cycle the bolt, and then that's fire. Okay, uh, very very nice design. It's got this nice uh, knurling here on it. Okay, um, very easy to actuate. Okay, your bolt release is here. You just pull this out, and you, you can get your bolt out if you want to take your bolt out um, all right so what you do is you put one in the tube you pop open the bottom okay it's a little bit kind of weird but you pop open the bottom and you feed your cartridges through the bottom and then you can top it off totally if you want all right you got to make sure when you feed it in through the bottom that you feed it in the first round goes in uh, on the same side as your 
uh, your, your opening here, okay? So I'm putting one on the left, then I'm putting one on the right, okay? Um, you gotta, you gotta stagger it. It's a lot of, you know, extra work that you gotta do just to get that extra one in there. But, uh, alright, so now I got two in there, and I'm gonna put the third one in, and then I just close it. And now I'm topped off, okay? Um, another nice thing about the, the Mouser style, uh, bolts is that you, you can control, you can control how, how much, how strong of the, uh, ejection you want, all right? So, if I pull the bolt back really hard, if I pull it back hard, I'll demonstrate right now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera back a little bit. And uh, I'll demonstrate to you if I pull the bolt back all the way really hard. You know, it gives it a real, real positive ejection. All right, but if I, if I do it very gently, okay, like, you know, just a little bit, you can see I can, I can control you know, how hard I want it to eject depending on how much force I apply. If I'm at the range, if I'm shooting at the range and I'm shooting off of a bench here and I don't want my shells to fly like crazy, I can just, you know, gently, I can just gently pull it back like this, you know, and it's not going to fly all the way around and I'm not going to have to pick it up, you know, but if I want to really get good positive extraction, like if I'm in a, a hunting situation or dangerous game, I pull it, I pull it back all the way, and you can see it flings it really far. Okay, um, I mean that, that just flung it back like like eight feet, you know. Um, so that's a, another big advantage of that, and uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm going to show you guys now a little thing that you need to keep in mind with this rifle is when you're uh, with the stock, if you take it apart, okay, this recoil lug screw here, um, it's a little bit hard to see because it's getting dark out now. Um, this recoil lug screw here, you want to tighten that down re really, really tight, okay? A lot of guys are complaining that the barrels are crooked inside of the stock, um, that they're a little bit canted to the left, and the reason why is that happened to me too. All right, these Rugers, they have a very high uh, torque specification for the recoil lug screw. So you got to tighten that down to like 90 pounds, okay? 90 inch pounds, all right? So uh, that's extremely tight. You really got to crank this, this uh, recoil lug screw really, really tight. Otherwise, if you don't have it tight, your barrel is going to be crooked a little bit to the left. It's going to be canted, okay? So that's, if, if you guys are noticing that your barrel is crooked after you reinstall it, after cleaning it or something like that, um, you, you haven't tightened the screw down tight enough. This has to be 90 inch pounds, and these screws here on the trigger guard have to be between 45 and 60 uh, inch pounds, okay? So you got to really crank this one down, um, and... Uh, so, you know, um, so what I want to show you is my scope here that I'm going to be putting on this. Um, this is an Athlon 2.5 to 15 by 50 scope, okay? Uh, it's got the um, illuminated reticle, parallax adjustment. It's got a, it has concealed target turrets or concealed tactical turrets with resettable zero here. All right, so these are tactical uh, turrets here. If I need to calculate my drop, I can easily do that and, and adjust and then re reset it back to zero. And all you do to reset the zero, I just unscrew this here and turn it up. This is a quarter MOA. Um, so with this scope, I plan to use this rifle for long range, um, long to, to intermediate range. Let me see if I can show you guys the, uh, the reticle here. All right, there's the reticle. Um, it's a little bit hard to see it's a second focal plane um, and I'll turn the illumination on so you can see what the illumination looks like it's a little bit hard to see the reticle now um, you know but it's it's basically it has a up to 30 MOA hash marks all right on on the windage and uh, elevation um, you know so I can calculate you know um, I can do my holdover with the reticle all right it goes up to 30 MOA 
This has a 60 MOA of, of uh, horizontal, not horizontal, what am I saying? This has 60 MOA of vertical adjustment or, or elevation adjustment, as you would call it. So it's it's a decent scope. Um, it's not top of the line. You know, Athlon is, is a very affordable priced scope. Um, and, you know, 2.5 to 15 power gives me the ability to go close range or very long range if I want. Um, up to 15 power, you know, with the with the 15 power scope, I can, um, you know, with the 15 power, I can go out to seven, eight hundred yards, no problem, on this this one right here. Okay, so uh, I'll do a separate review of the scope later, but it has these nice, um, you know, nice parallax adjustment. I mean, it's actually a really good scope for the money, uh, and uh, you know, it has this this um, illumination knob what i like about the illumination knob is that you it, it has a zero in between each one each setting so what that means is that if you look at the illumination knob it doesn't just go from one setting to the next it has a in between each setting it can you can shut it off i also have to mount this uh, adjustable cheek rest all right which is made by hawkeye customs and i'll do a separate video on that all right, uh, Hawkeye custom cheek rests. Okay, uh, nice little uh, Kydex with a little flag on the top. Um, and uh, so I got to drill holes in my stock here. And uh, here's the business card if you guys are interested. Uh, Austin, Austin Hazek, uh, Hawkeye Customs. Okay, um, and. Uh, so, you know, it has these nice steel steel hardware. That's what I like about this one. And uh, you know, it's not too thick. A lot of the other cust a lot of the other cheek rests are a little bit too thick. Um, and it's hard to find one in OD green, so it's going to match my stock well. And it's got the hardware on the adjustable cheek rest is all steel. So, um, so the next video, I'm going to do a um, the next video, I will do a range trip with this, okay? Um, and I'll show you guys some of the custom features on this. I'm going to add the cheek rest. I'm going to change the trigger. I'm going to mount the scope on this, okay? Um, and then I'll take it out to the range, okay? So uh, the range video is going to be fun. Um, for my first range video is going to be sh like medium range up to 400 yards, and then the next range video, I'll go out to maybe seven, eight hundred yards, and we'll see how accurate this thing is. All right, but initially, you know, first impressions out of the box, I really like this uh, rifle. Okay, it's very handy. Um, let me see if I can't get a better shot. It's a really handy rifle. Uh, feels really good. You know, it, it has a good, uh, you know balance to it okay especially with iron sights i mean if you're looking for a dangerous game rifle this rifle right here in a 375 ruger is an excellent choice for alaska um even africa okay uh even the 300 wind mag is fine for dangerous game um in certain cases with heavier bullets you can you can handle a a bear if you have to so um all right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed my uh, very thorough review of this rifle, and uh, I look forward to uh, bringing you a range review and uh, subsequent reviews of the rifle. So take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps, prepare, practice, and persevere.